Alexia. Can't get this out. She's an avid traveler, health advocate, and is going to share with us a very personal story about the dark side of Kilimanjaro. All right, good evening. Uh, my name is Amber Grassi, and I'm going to share with you a moment I'm not very proud of. I'm going to share you a moment that I call the dark side of Kilimanjaro. So you see, I grew up in Houston, Texas, the uh, daughter of a uh, young, poor parents, at least by some standards. My dad liked to take me, uh, he liked to play the drums and take me out of school, take me off for a ride on his motorcycle. And my mom, she liked to play the guitar, tell me stories of mermaids and faraway places. So whether by natural design or whatever, I'm quite ambitious. I like to climb everything. Um, so I think grit, determination, and uncompromising independence, these are the values that I hold dear. So fast forward, I meet Renee. We marry, we travel the world, we have two kids. He accepts my brand of crazy. You see, so at 15 years, we set out to watch a sunrise on the highest peak in Africa. So you see, um, I plot, I strategize, I get paid to sell problems, so here's how I saw it. 19,341 feet, 30,000 trekkers a year, 65% reach the top. We'll get this done. So what we do, make a plan, get her done. So to February 2012, we arrive in Tanzania. So six days, we'll watch that sunrise on day five. We have all of our accompaniments, we're well conditioned, but most importantly, we have Babu and a group of porters who are gonna help us get there. Day one, we trek through a muddy rainforest. Day two, we go across the moorlands and sleep at 12 and a half thousand feet and I am vibrating that my life has taken me to this place. Day three, we walk across an alpine desert and I, for the first time, feel like what it must be like to be an astronaut on a foreign planet. But I'm noticing that as we descend 2,000 feet from our 15,000 foot high, that my husband is falling behind. We arrive at Barranco Camp and I am about to learn altitude's knack for showing you your weaknesses. I wake up and frozen earth, and my husband is moaning. He's hurting, his chest is hurting, and he is out of breath. In the morning we wake up, and I know that must, we make, must, must, must make the decision to call the helicopter. But you see, that summit is right behind me. It's taunting me, calling me, saying, come and get me. But Babu's words echo in my mind. He said, mountain is mountain, life is life. So we wait. We wait, and what happens when you wait on Kilimanjaro? You stay on Kilimanjaro. But I wait in my self-obsession, determination, and pride, and the helicopter never comes. We have only but one choice, and that choice is to send the Umbwe route, the steepest, the shortest, and one only attempted as an ascent. We go down in the dark. My husband is hurting, collapsing, and the, the whole porters are now holding him up and telling us, only 20 more minutes, only 20 more minutes. But you see, I am with the one I spend my life with, and in this dark moment, I don't see him, for I walk down in the dark in my own uncompromising independence. For eight hours, we walk in the dark with Africa's night song around us. And the plan is not the plan I planned, but there's another one now. The bus is idling at the end of our jungle trail, and it is 2 a.m. Morning comes, we wait again. This time we wait for a fit-to-fly order, but you know, his symptoms have subsided now. And I think, did we make the wrong choice? My reptilian brain. But no matter, no matter, we are headed home. But you know, my grit teaches me I don't like to leave things undone. But you ever seen a cat in a bathtub? That's pretty much like I was on that uh, tarmac. But we get home and we find out that Renee had a pulmonary embolism. But you see, the funny thing is, is that his clot formed before we ever left. It was Kilimanjaro that saved his life. The clot had to be exposed. So I have had to sit for the last four years with the knowledge of my rabid ambition, right? Knowing that when he needed me most, I didn't reach back my hand. I chose to, to, to stand alone, arms crossed, in my uncompromising independence. But I've also learned something else about myself, and that is that we are all beings of many contrasts, and that what is, gives us courage in one moment can expose itself in the ugliest of ways. 
So I have learned to accept this fact. And now I live with my grit, I live with my determination, but I also reach my hand back in my uncompromising interdependence. And to Babu and the list of porters who sang us down that mountain in the dark, Asante Sana. Thank you.